This is AndyTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set the height of the needle bar and set the timing of the needle point to the hook point on a Singer Model 99K. I'll start with some explanations uh, first. This cross bar that you see right here with the part that comes down, that's called the slack thread regulator. And attached to the slack thread regulator is a pointer. You can see this one is loose. And it, and it shouldn't be loose. But I made it loose because I wanted you to see um, the timing gauge that's right here. This timing gauge um, has two timing marks on it and the top timing mark I don't know if I can get much closer here without it blurring out here is that going to focus? no um, the top timing mark on this is to help set the height of the needle bar and the bottom timing mark is used to set the hook timing and that's the same on every um, Singer machine I've ever worked on except this is the first one that has this timing gauge usually these timing marks are, are etched into the needle bar itself but not on this model so when we're going to start to do this we need to have the presser bar lifted up by raising this lever all the way and your presser bar should have been set to the height of the factory recommended 5 16th inch meaning the bottom of the presser bar the presser foot is 5 16th inches above the top of the needle plate or throat plate when the bar is raised and uh, if you need to see how to check and set that please look on AndyTube for the video about the pressure bar system of a Singer Model 99K so to start with these procedures and it's kinda like the needle bar height and the timing of the hook have to work together because you have to verify first that your needle bar is at the right height or timing it to the hook isn't going to matter and the way that you start that procedure is you want to lower the needle bar uh, to the lowest point that it will go okay and you can you can look down here at the uh, needle clamp now I just look at the link here and when it bottoms out right then I know it's at the lowest point point. and when the when the needle bar is at the lowest point this pointer the, the point on the pointer should be even with the top uh, mark on the timing gauge now this could be loose or it could be angled if it's missing you got a problem <laughs> but um, this is this is how you want to set it and you want to position it so that the very point of the pointer is right on that top timing mark just like that. How come my machine wants to fall back here? Oh, I guess I'll have to hold it. So, uh, when it is there, you, you tighten the screw that holds the pointer. I bumped it a little bit here. Let me make sure I've got it. And when you're, when you're setting the needle bar low, 
You know, you always want to turn the hand wheel towards the front of the machine, like you were sitting in front of it, and you turn the hand wheel counterclockwise, which means you're turning it towards yourself. Okay, that looks good. So let me tighten that up. Okay, then I'll just check it. I'll go past that and I'll lower the needle bar to its lowest point. And I'll check that the point of the pointer is right on that horizontal timing mark. Looks fabulous. Okay. Now, be, before I start timing the hook, I, I want to show you, you may need to set the height of the needle bar. And, and I have the needle bar set screw loosened. So, you see how I can move that needle bar up and down a little bit? It's not much, but you, I can move it. And I want to show you where that uh, needle bar and the set screw is because usually on the ones I've done it's been accessible from the front but this comes from dead behind the head of the machine so I'm going to turn the machine over and I'm going to set it on like face down here <clears throat> and see if I can get a little bit of light right in the center back is about a, I don't know, th th three eighths of an inch hole right there. And in that hole is the head of that set screw for you to get a screwdriver on. So if you need to loosen that and adjust the height of your needle bar, this is where you have to do it. Okay, so that being said, let me get this back. And I don't have the machine sitting flat. I have it tilted back on the hand wheel end because I thought that would, I could get a better angle on this for you. Okay. Now, Remember, we're, we're, we bottomed out the needle and we adjusted or made sure that our pointer point is on the top mark. Now you want to continue turning the hand wheel counterclockwise or towards the front a wee bit. And you're going to see that uh, needle bar and timing gauge come up here. I'll, I'll move it a lot so you can see. Okay. But when you're bottomed out and your pointer's on the hash mark, you just turn it a little bit. And the needle bar is going to come up like maybe an eighth of an inch. And on that up stroke is where you have the point of the pointer now on the bottom hash mark. So you've got the pointer on the lower timing mark, which is the hook timing mark mark and you do that on the up swing on the up take of the needle see because I mean it goes past that point twice during a, a stroke right so when your needle bottoms out and then starts to come back up, turning the hand wheel towards you, that's when you get on that mark. Ta-da! That's the timing mark for the hook. Now, you want to look at your hook point and needle point and the hook should be directly behind the needle. Let's see if I'm going to be able to 
adjust this camera a little bit to show you that. Maybe I can still tilt this up a little bit. So the point of the hook should be dead behind the needle. It should you shouldn't be able to see the point of the hook before the needle and you shouldn't see the point of the hook sticking out past the needle on the left. It's got to be dead behind it. And in this case, it's not. My hook point is about uh, more than an eighth of an inch before the needle. So I'm going to be skipping stitches like crazy. Okay. If the point is right behind the needle, that's where it should be. And the eye of the needle should be about a sixteenth of an inch below the hook point. So if that's what you're seeing, your timing is good. You're, you're done. But if you don't see the hook point behind the needle and the eye of the needle about a sixteenth of an inch below the hook, then your timing is off, whether it's past or before. And the way that you correct this is you have to loosen a set screw that holds the hook in place because you're going to have to turn the hook one way or the other independent of the needle. You don't want your needle uh, bar to move because you've got it set at the at the timing gauge just perfectly, right? So you've got to go under your machine and right there you see a screw and that's the clamping screw that um, the post of the hook comes down to, or the shank of the hook comes down to. And when that's tightened, the hook stays in that correct place. So we want to loosen it some so that we can turn the hook independent of the needle moving. Okay. So, let's see, I'm just going to make sure that my my timing mark is correct up here. And I see, like I said, that my hook point is off. So, I can't go any lower here really. So I want to move this hook point to the left a little bit and I want to get it behind the needle. So I've got to hold on to the hand wheel so that my needle bar and, and, uh, and anything else will not move and then I've got to rotate that hook. Now, if the hook doesn't want to spin because it's mucky in there, it's all stiff and, and uh, hung up, what you can do is take a screwdriver here and put it in one of these three slots over here and brace it and use it to turn the hook. There. Now my, now my hook point is way, way past, but I wanted to show you how you can use that to turn the hook. And, and you don't let the, you hold on to the hand wheel while you're doing that. Let's see if that's loose now and I can turn it. See, I got this all clean so I can rotate my hook very easily. Um, because I, I cleaned it, right? Now, 
if, if the hook shaft under here is all dirty, you can put crud cutter or you can put a penetrating oil or alcohol or something and loosen it up. Or just by holding the hand wheel and putting a screwdriver in there to give you some leverage, you can move that hook around. Yeah, my needle, my hook point is still a little bit past there. Now I'm looking at that and I see that my hook point's directly behind the needle. I can't see the hook point on the right and I don't see it sticking out on the left. Then I put a piece of thread in the eye of the needle so I can get an idea. And it's basically from the top of the eye of the needle up to the hook should be about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm a little bit over that. So that's why by loosening the, the needle clamp screw I showed you in the back, you can loosen that and you can raise or lower the needle to get the height that you want. So I'm going to reach back there and see if I can stick my little screwdriver in there find that set screw because I got to raise my needle bar just a, just a bit not much now a lot of times what I'll do is kind of semi tighten that set screw so that I can force that needle bar to move up and down a little bit and then it'll stay in place but actually I, I got lucky and I'm looking at it right now my hook point is behind the needle the eye of the needle is about a sixteenth of an inch below the hook and oops let me go come up here and my pointer is still lined up with the bottom timing mark so that is all golden so now I want to go in and I'm going to just tighten that needle bar set screw nice and tight now because I don't want it to budge while I'm sewing. Then I can, I can, let's see here, get this out of here now. I can turn the hand wheel, have the needle come up, the hook oscillates, hook comes down on the up stroke of the needle bar. When my pointer is on the bottom hash mark, there, I can see my hook point right behind. You are able to see that eye of the needle. All right, so once we, we're sure that everything is, you know, good, good there, uh, we have to remember to tighten that clamping screw on the hook. Do you remember that where we loosen the clamping screw here so that we could we could turn the hook and line it up with the needle point and once we've done that we want to come back down in here of course and tighten it up. Nice and firm. If you don't want that moving we'll lose our timing there. I think that covers everything. Thanks for watching. I hope that you learned something about needle height and timing on a Singer Model 99K. And come back and see me when you can. Take care.